I guess most of you know who Clinton Kogel is. He was the uh, founder of the School of Ar Architectural Engineering at Virginia Tech, and he founded that in 1928 and was its head until he retired in 1956. He, um, <coughs> During that time, he, he was actually had many accomplishments. He wrote a textbook. Uh, this, is, this is the textbook that was in use for quite a while, architectural practice. So this is a letter that he wrote to President Burris in 1928 um, when he was seeking the job. And he was 37 years old. He moved here with his wife. Um, he had been out of school for about 12 years. He had been a, um, teaching for the last eight years and in practice four years prior to that. Uh, this is a letter of recommendation. These documents, by the way, are in the special collection in, uh, at the university library. This is a letter of recommendation. from. Uh, he moved here from Ames, Iowa. Now, most of the houses, tonight we'll talk about the houses he did. Um, he did do some other buildings besides houses. In, the low, in our area, he did um, the original airport hangar. Uh, he did um, the faculty club. Uh, he did one of the buildings on campus. And in addition, I forgot to mention, he was the uh, university architect for a while. So he, he kept pretty busy. And during that time, during the 30s, mid to late 30s, um, he designed uh, you know, about 10 houses that we know of in Blacksburg and probably others. Um, this view, I view this lecture as sort of a, a work in progress. It, it's uh, aimed toward eventually uh, maybe publishing a document that uh, summarizes his work. Most of the houses are what's called colonial revival, and I'm sure you're familiar with that term. It's colonial revival includes um, uh, Georgian, federal, Dutch colonial, different styles within that, and also uh, Tudor colonial or Tudor revival. This is a typical floor plan, um, and this, this is a, it's kind of typical of a Kogel house. It's um, bilaterally symmetrical except for the two sides. Usually one is an enclosed sunroom and one is a porch of some type. The entry is prominent and uh, two stories are common. This is a list that I uh, obtained when I started this investigation from the special collections. That, um, and I'm sure there are other houses that are not on this list that, that are Kogel houses. This was his own house. Um, this is a, an article that was in the paper some years back. Now, in his book, he talks, he quotes Sir Henry, is that Watton or Woten? Does anybody know which it is? <laughs> okay. Um, and so Kogel put strong emphasis on commodity, which is basically functionality, firmness, and delight. Um, and I think in his own work, he put special emphasis on firmness because all of the houses he designed are very well crafted. Um, this is obviously a Tudor revival style. The windows are not the original windows. Um, and I'm sure that the current occupant, uh, the Moody's, they, they do regret. They, they didn't change the windows, but uh, this is an eighth inch scale original sketch for his own house. Some of these we're going to go through fairly quickly because they are kind of extensive and I don't want to uh, bore you with them. But these are just original sketches. Um, this is the back. The top is the rear elevation, and the, at the bottom is the right elevation. Interesting windows in the upper, in upper level here. 
This is a section. He didn't do a lot of sections, building sections. He, does, he draws a lot of details, but not a lot of sections. And he didn't do his own working drawings. He usually had a draftsman doing the working drawings for him. Um, these, <clears throat> when you, as we go through these plans, you'll see how extensive they are compared to the drawings that most houses are built from today. There's a lot of emphasis on detail, and that's what, that's what makes these houses special frequently, is the level of detail, the level of thought that goes into the, the building and the construction. It's not left to the builder. Um, I mean, build, many builders uh, can, could do this on their own, but um, unless it's in the drawings, you're not likely to get it. Let me back up just for a second. That's 804 Preston. Now you see the windows on the left side there? Those are very interesting little uh, dormers up there that you don't often see a shed dormer with that low a pitch. This is the, <coughs> the front entry. It has a um, massive door. This door, it, I have no I, I don't know how much it weighs, but it's got to be 250, 300 pounds. This is a floor plan, first floor plan. This is one of his more complex floor plans. Most often his houses are very symmetrical in nature and very simple plans. His own house has a more convoluted plan. Now you can see the timbers that are indicated overhead. Those are reused from um, log cabins. <coughs> To my knowledge, this is the only house. He did reuse timbers in a couple of garages, but this is the only one I know of that he did, did that in the house. This is the left side elevation again with those funky dormers. Now, there was a lot of restoration work done not too long ago because these oak sills and uh, were decayed and they were repaired with a, an epoxy resin and that was um, I understand pretty expensive but it looks like it was very well done. This is <clears throat> some drawings he did to show how those window sills are um, they're cut by hand. Just amazing detail in this house. This is a drawing that shows where he recycled the timbers from this log cabin. You can see the elevations of the log cabin. And he listed those and decided where every timber would go in his own house. Some of them just became firewood, and, and they're noted as firewood. This is a timber in the, the great room or the living room. It has this sort of corbelled out um, bracket that supports it. There you can see it. And this is, these are actually hand-hewn timbers as the deck, the floor deck of the attic above is also hand-hewn material. It's not just simulated hand-hewn either. This is, um, I believe this is the kitchen cabinets. And um, I, he goes into a lot of detail, more detail on this house than on many. Uh, you know, the, all the casework is detailed in this house. This shows the stair. The, the walls in the great room, and actually in the house itself, are um, cinder block, true cinder block. And uh, I believe those have been covered up with plaster now. There's a stone fireplace. This is the paneling that has a, a sort of a pickled finish on it. This is the garage for that house, another timber structure. Now this house, you may recognize it. It took, my wife recognized it. We had no idea where it was. We thought it was out in the middle of a field. Um, but uh, she recognized it. There were um, 
I understand there were two women who, who <laughs> built the house or, pardon me? Uh huh. And that the right side of the house was built as an apartment. I guess they rented that out. Yes, they did. And um, uh huh. And <clears throat> I think it's unfortunate that the windows in the apartment weren't uh, dormers, weren't gabled dormers. But um, otherwise, it's hard to criticize this facade. Um, now the house has been connected. Originally, they were basically two separate houses with two kitchens and lots of bedrooms and lots of baths. And now it's connected. It, it's kind of it's a very odd plan right now. It's for sale. It's for sale. Yeah, yeah. But it has a very nice entry. You see the keystones above the windows. Those are those are kind of a um, a hallmark of his. The, um, there's a lot of detail at the eve. It's a very nice entry. What, what's amazing is that um, the exterior wood on these houses is, is frequently specified as, as red wood or fir. And it's held up amazingly well. It's really in good shape, this house in particular. I mean, you, you would swear that that wood was 10 years old if you go and look at those moldings. This is another one of his details. He makes, it, it's a signature where the gutter doesn't just stop. There's always a termination to the gutter. Um, this one is, is pretty elegant. The one, we actually live in a Kogel house um, and ours are very clunky, but this one is, is nice. This is a side entry to that house. There are two of these little um, overhangs that protect it. Again, it, it's just the, the level of thought that goes into the, the craftsmanship. The brick, he uses this um, Flemish bond in a lot of houses with the grapevine strike in the mortar. That's another signature. And the, the brick itself, too, is, uh, it's like, um, it's a, it's very similar to uh, an old Virginia handmade brick. This you, you see on some of his houses, the window in the chimney and, and the attic windows up above. That you see a lot of, of this. And his basements are mostly poured in place concrete. The houses are very stout, very well built. At least two of them, the walls are brick on cinder block. No wood studs behind them until you get up above, up to the roof level. Um, and light wells bringing light into the basement, even if most of them are just unfinished basements, but it's nice to have that natural light down there. This is the house next door, and um, I wouldn't doubt that it's also one of his houses. Uh, I don't know for sure. Does anyone know? <laughs> it's right next door to the... Um, you probably all know this house. It's, a, it's one of the nicest houses in Blacksburg. It's, seems to have been very well kept. It has a, a nice copper roof on it now. Yeah. This is the same detail on uh, the Draper Road, 900 Draper. Now, this, this is a, a more ornamental eve condition. You can see at the freeze. And this is that same window into the, the chimney. This is 808 Preston. This house is in great shape too. Um, the, uh, the, the side porch has been enclosed. <laughs> It's the front elevation of that house. 
Here are the drawings associated with the entry, the door, and the, and the brick, and the columns, or the uh, pilasters, rather. This is the right side of the house. It's on a steeply sloping lot, so you can see uh, at the back there's a stair that walks down. Nice detail in the upper left. Here's that same bay window. And this shows how the brick is supported above uh, a wood framed roof. It, the brick just starts there and supported by a lintel. This is the rear elevation. And the right side elevation. Just an amazing level of detail. You know, if you did a set of documents like this today, it'd be 40 grand just for the drawings. <clears throat> this is the uh, ground floor plan. It's the upper level. And this is the basement. Um, now, he, he does basement plans in all of his drawings, and uh, a lot of his drawings have pretty complex mechanical plans, too. I mean, when's the last time you saw a mechanical drawing for a house? He, he wrote specs for all these projects, too. And uh, this is a fairly, you know, fairly innocuous looking house, but check out that entry. It's just amazing. Does anybody know if this Beamer, I don't think this Beamer is related to, because he's from Hillsville, right? Yeah. Are they? Is he? This is that house today. One, one thing I can tell you about, all the people who live in his houses do really seem to appreciate them. It's the Dietrich house. Yeah, most of these houses were built for professors too, I guess, quite a, quite a number of them. This is that house today. This is the same house today. Now this, this is interesting because it, it does still have the, the open porch on the, on the left side. It hasn't been enclosed. A lot of those porches have been enclosed over the years. Now for the Montgomery house, these are, these are the actual original sketches um, that were done by his hand. These are copy, this, these are his pencil sketches. This is just the, on a small one eighth inch scale, um, you know, something you would show to a client. Uh, what do you like? And this was another, you know, another idea for the same house, a different roof line. This has the hipped roof. This is what was actually built, but this was an alternate. And these are the floor plan schematic level, just quick, you know, down and dirty sketches. Second floor plan and a second floor alternate plan. This is our house. Um, and uh, when it was built, I understand that it was a airport road was gravel, and it was a lot of fields there. 
Um, the Saunders or Sanders, they, um, he and a, a gentleman who they were, he was a professor and there was one who, who built a house on the left side of this house and they developed that area. They actually wrote uh, covenants for the development of the rest of the houses in that area. This is the, the house today. Needs a little work. But we're getting ready to do that. It's the front elevation. Um, we haven't done any restoration work on the house, really, except we've changed the inside some. But we haven't done any work yet to the outside. This side, this west elevation really takes a beating too from the sun and the wind and the rain. There's a drawing of the door or the, the uh, ped pediment above the door. You know, you would think that that would be a stock item that you could just order from a catalog and today it is and it may have been then too but it looks as if, I mean, it. It looks as if it's custom made with that level of drawing. Now this is the, the clunky detail I was telling you about that looks like the birdhouse sitting on the end of the... Um, we're going to replace these. Now I'm just showing you this because it's an operable wooden shutter. It really works and all of his shutters really work. They're not just screwed to the brick. This is a window detail. Um, this is a dormer, set, the second floor <coughs> dormer. This house is different because it's a one and a, um, from the outside it's not a full two story. It's like a one and a half story cape. And it's, as far as I know, it's the only one that's like that. It's got a great plan inside. This, it, this is the ground floor plan. It's, it's very simple and very open, very spacious. We have, um, we have high ceilings and it, it actually has a modern feel to it. The rooms do. They don't, they're not cut up. It's not chopped up like a lot of colonials are. But uh, This is the basement floor. Notice the steel beam section in the lower left. Now, this shows you that because he's a, a, a commercial architect as well as a residential architect, he has the ability to bring steel and concrete into his projects. In his own house, I believe that the basement or the first floor level is concrete, isn't it? It's, it's a cast slab. It's some sort of a coffered slab. This is the heating system drawing. It has steam heat. And uh, we actually have some um, photos of the house under construction. The first part was uh, drilling the well. That They uh, drilled four or five wells before they got one that was reliable, I believe. And we still use that for irrigation purposes. Um, it was common back then when you poured um, a basement out of cast, cast in place concrete is you dug it out and actually used the dirt as the formwork for the outside of the foundation. And if you look closely here, you can, you can see that's what they've done. That, that house um, is just to the south of ours that's existing, but it's one of the few that was on Airport Road at the time. There's, um, we have a, a large uh, red oak tree in our front yard right next to the road and it's not in any of these photos. So even though it looks like it's about 150 years old, it's only about 75 years old. Look at all those guys on the roof there. Can you believe that? <laughs> and they're all wearing white shirts and ties. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
This house was unbelievably, it's built in like four months. I mean, I don't know how they did it, except they had a lot of people working on it. But uh, I think if you built that house today, it'd take at least a year, probably longer. Actually, over the summer months, if you look at the dates on the photos, it was built very, very quickly. Look at that. What is that machine? Is that a threshing machine? Does anybody know? And they're doing the final grading with horses. So that, that's the end of, uh, that's about all I have.